if she never won an Academy Award or achieved the superstar status of Marilyn Monroe or Elizabeth Taylor, she still remains the secret crush of generations of male moviegoers. You mention her name and eyes light up. That name is Angie Dickinson. She was born Angeline Brown in September of 1931 in the prairie town of Cullum, North Dakota. Her father ran the newspaper in this small town, but once a week he would run the movies at the local movie theater. Angie developed an early fascination with stardom. It was by chance her father's drinking problem that inadvertently led to her acting career when Angie's mother picked up the family and moved to Burbank, California. She was 11 at the time of the move. There are pictures of her as a teenager that show this blonde beauty whose unique eyes made her appear innocent and real vulnerable. There were a lot of reports from that time that she was also really boy crazy, but super smart. When she was a senior in high school, she won the 6th annual Bill of Rights contest. She was toying with the idea of becoming a writer like her father, but after finishing college, she got stuck working as a secretary in an airplane's parts factory. In 1953, everything changed when she impulsively entered the local Miss America contest and took second place. She followed that by appearing on a TV show called Beauty Parade, in which she won the competitions of the week, month, and finally of the year. A role on the Colgate Comedy Hour followed. All of this exposure brought her to the attention of television industry producers. They just asked her to consider a career in acting, so she decided to start studying the craft for a few years. On New Year's Eve in 1954, she made her television acting debut on an episode of Death Valley Days. Soon after, roles in the productions of Buffalo Bill, City Detective, Grey Ghost, The People's Choice, The Virginian, Gunsmoke, they followed up soon. In 1958, she was cast as Laura Meadows in an episode of The Deserters on ABC. That year, she also played the role of defendant Mrs. Fargo in Perry Mason's episode, The Case of the One-Eyed Witness. Her big break came in the film Rio Bravo, where she played the part of Feathers in the 1959 film. This film made her a star and confirmed her strengths as a spunky, beautiful, self-assured woman that wasn't intimidated by a full cast of tough guys. She combined brains and beauty, style and independence. She somehow managed to convey both sexiness and strength in her movies. But what did she think about working with John Wayne? Well, to start with, she was kind of awestruck because she was fairly new into the motion picture business. Her biggest worry while shooting the film was discussing politics with John Wayne. You see, her parents and her were both Democrats, and John Wayne was a staunch Republican. She felt if she got too close to him, she would start discussing politics, and that might be a problem. The problem might be that she felt like she might really like him, and this was a problem because she knew that his thinking was far different from hers and her family's. You don't often see John Wayne movies where he confronts a strong female character, and this one he does. The two of them create a strong rapport, and she attributes all of this to the writing. She felt that the writing was underrated and often ignored in the movie because it looked so natural. But she stated, but you forget that all those words were written by Jules Firthman and Lee Brackett. Rio Bravo was basically called a suspense movie, but she felt like it was actually a romance movie. 
you see John Wayne fall head over heels over this beautiful girl. In life and in the characters, there is a big age difference between herself and John Wayne. That seems to never enter into the picture. What you see is an absolutely beautifully done dialogue exchange. Folks, it doesn't get much better than this in a movie. In 1963, Universal Studios had her legs insured for $1 million. Those same legs that were insured for that amount were a memorable billboard for California avocados. She turned down the role of Crystal Harrington in the nighttime soap dynasty, and she also turned down Playboy magazine when they asked her to pose for a centerfold after she had already turned 50. She's been nominated for a host of awards, including her own television series, Police Woman, which earned her a Golden Globe. In addition to the countless TV appearances, she also had been in more than 85 movies, including Point Blank and Dress to Kill. She starred in the original version of Ocean's Eleven and then appeared in the 2001 version of the film as herself. Her mother was against her becoming an actress until the time that she introduced her to Frank Sinatra. She had a 10-year intermittent relationship with Sinatra, and she always thought that he was the true love of her life. She became very close to marrying him at one time. She always has stated that he just had a magical way that he made her feel very, very comfortable. She had a whirlwind romance that led to a 15-year marriage to composer Burt Bacharach. They divorced in 1980 during the chaotic days of Police Woman. She never remarried, but there was never a shortage of interested admirers including Johnny Carson, Larry King, Julio Iglesias, and the newsman Harry Reasoner. And there's a fairly new story that has come out at the time of this recording. About three weeks ago, a book called Gate Crashers states that Mickey Mantle actually threw up on Angie Dickinson while he was having sex with her. The shoe does kind of fit. Mickey did have somewhat of a drinking problem. Now quickly, let's touch on how she got the name Dickinson. She was actually married to Gene Dickinson, who was a former football player. She was married to him from 1952 to 1960. During her long and celebrated career, this North Dakota-born actress stood toe-to-toe on screen with some of the biggest leading men of the day. Thank you, Angie Dickinson, for the great roles you played. We loved you in Rio Bravo and all the other roles that you stirred our childhood crushes. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.